Hello, 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 Madcaps, and welcome back. And thank you for joining the Miscellaneous Debris Podcast. Featuring me, your host, the Mad Chatter, Ryan M. K. Thank you again for joining, and welcome back again. <laughs> I hope you've all been well. Hope you've all been well. Uh, I've been well. Well, I'm well now, I should say. Uh, I'm well now. But man, I had a bit of a shit weekend. Yes. I mean, to begin, it was super fucking hot. I'm sorry. I got to just rant and complain here for a second, Mad Cats, because it's it just hot as hell. As hell. I mean, record heat waves across the country, including here in the Mile High City, Denver, Colorado. It was fucking hot. And on top of that, I was working. And at an outside location. And of course, I'm decked out, black pants, black chef coat, cooking outside in the heat. It just, it was, it was miserable, man, and woman's. On top of that, on top of that, my guy, my partner in crime, my buddy, Deshaun, called in to work sick. Now, I'm sure he was actually sick, but that didn't make this weekend any easier. No, not at all. On Saturday, they stopped. Sorry, I keep, keep knocking my wand around. There's a reason I have a wand. We'll get to that. But the guy that they, they gave to me for help on Saturday, now I've seen him before, been around him before. Holy shit, have never worked with him. Um, and I just got to say, if I ever have to do it again, just fucking chainsaw my head off already because uh, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was straight from the bayou. He had like that Cajun. It reminded me of a dude from the water boy. You know that? Hey, it was a Iskiodo. It was like that, but quiet. So not only could I not understand him half the time, I couldn't fucking hear his ass half the time. Yeah, you know what I mean? No, no, I don't know what you mean. Cause I don't know what the fuck you said. Kills me. I just, oh, ooh. I don't know what happened. Somewhere along the way, my patience, my tolerance, stupid people, ridiculous people, ignorant people. I just, just, it's all gone down. <laughs> way down. Way down, the tolerance has. And then Sunday, I was all by myself, which I don't mind working by myself. It's more like, hey, I got to pee. Now I got to sit and wait. For somebody to come relieve me so I can go pee. Hey, I need a goddamn cigarette. Now I gotta wait till someone comes around and watch this shit for a minute so I can go have a cigarette. Whereas if I got a partner there, I just, you know, I'll be right back. I'll be back in five, you know? A <sighs> lot harder to do when you're by yourself, you know what I mean? So, but you know, it, it, it's all good. Shit's over, you know? Now we're into the week. I'm into my days off, enjoying that. And really, I'm looking forward to the rest of this week overall. I mean, we're halfway through. It's Wednesday. Hump day. Hump day. <laughs> Many days are hump days for me. I'm just saying. <laughs> anyway, um, looking forward to the week. I really, I really am. Um, I'd be knocking out the pot. I was hoping to get it knocked out earlier for you mad caps, but <sighs> I won't even begin. So I tried recording yesterday during the day. And this usually doesn't go well, trying to record during the day with people awake. Usually it's best very early in the morning or very late at night. Usually not a good idea during the day. But the wife was at work. And I thought the boys will be good on their pads. And because uh, they were being good on their pads. And I start recording. And, and one boy it decides to make very loud noise. And I get that taken care of. And then I start recording again. And the next boy, he comes out because he's got to take a shit. I got to poop, dad. Well, thank you. I asked if you need to go to the bathroom before I started recording. But that's okay. You go ahead and poop. And then he gets done. I sit down, start to record again. And the neighbor from downstairs, who I think has never came and knocked on my door, decided it would be the perfect time 
to come knock on my door and bring up toys for my kids that she had playing in. Very nice. I like this neighbor. Sweet old lady. I appreciate the toys. One of the gifts was a big bag of just random Lego pieces, which me and the boys love, the Legos. And we take all the random pieces. But fuck, it's just bad timing. And then I finally get recording again and my wife FaceTimed me because she had gotten off work. And I was just like, you know, uh, the universe clearly does not want me to fucking pod. And I'm going to be honest, Mac Cabs, half the time, if I don't get a pod out or I get it out late or something like that, it's because of shit like that. <laughs> shit gone wrong during the recording. It's not like every time I'm just like, oh, I'm not going to pod or anything like that. Half the time, I get it going, something happens. It's, it's, it's insane. Really, how often it happens to me? It's crazy. I don't dwell on it, of course, but it is a little crazy. Happens, happens a lot. <laughs> but I'm gonna get this pod done. You know, we're gonna have a good time. We've got some fun stuff to talk about, some crazy stuff to talk about. And then I've got the next couple of days of my day off. I'm gonna do some poker, play some poker. That's right. And, and, I'm going to focus on a little something that I've got coming for you. I know I've been talking about this magication thing that I had an idea for. Not quite that, but I've got something. So just keep an eye out for it. I'm super excited, super excited. Um, just trying to, I guess, get the best setup for the recording aspect of it. You just don't worry about it. You just don't. Just enjoy when it comes out. Anyway, it's going to be a good rest of the week, I think. Stanley Cup playoffs start tonight. That's right. And my Colorado Avalanche are right there. Avalanche versus the Tampa Bay Lightning. The two-time defending cup champions. Will they three-beat? Or will my Colorado Avalanche hand them their ass? I think it's the latter. Not just because I'm an Avs fan. But I, was, I, I may have talked about this in the last podcast. And I'm sorry. It, it, little sports for a second. So bear with me. Or just skip ahead a minute. <laughs> but ask me, I might have spoken about this last class. But, uh, last class? Class? Are we in class now? Huh? Last pod. And I told my wife and my mom, I was just explaining to them, like, I've never rooted for a team that looked this dominant, that looks like we're not going to fucking lose, you know? It's only happened one other time to me. When I was younger, I was big on Dirk Nowinski. And I was really wanting to watch him get a title. And, you know, he went up against the Miami Heat. They lost that year, had the 2-0 series lead, end up losing in, 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 in six, I think, to Dwayne Wade and Shaquille O'Neal Shaq, my guy. <laughs> and I actually, my guy, I don't know him. But I'm rather fond of Shaquille O'Neal. I think he's a good dude, does good stuff, and he cracks me up. But, yeah, it, it, it was a few years later. The Mavericks are back in. And I'm just watching him. And Dirk Nowitzki, look, Dirk looked unbeatable. He was just not going to let the Mavericks lose. And then they go to the finals and again play the Miami Heat. And I remember when they won the Western Conference finals. They get a trophy for that. Dirk didn't even hang around that, that, that trophy ceremony, nothing. He was out. He was like, ah, we're not done yet. And... You know, I've seen lots of teams watching sports over the years. You know, you see a Patriots team that just looks unbeatable, um, you know, like that. But it, again, not usually a team I'm rooting for. But that Mavericks team that won that championship, that took out Miami and the big three, LeBron James, after he took his talents to South Beach, that was the only team I've ever rooted for that I was looking at and going, man, they, and women, they just don't seem like they can lose. They just don't. And that's how I feel with the Colorado Avalanche right now. They just, no matter what happens, that last game, they were down four to two in the third period. Oh man, it looks like this is going to go back to Colorado for game five, right? And they just turn it on. They take the lead. They score three goals, take the lead. It's 5-4. Edmonton ties it up. It's 5-5. It goes in overtime. And you're just, as an Avs fan, sitting there going, yeah, probably going, you know, they got a lot of momentum, probably going back home. And then the Avs take them out in overtime. 
onto the Stanley Cup Finals, swept the Oilers. The Avalanche have only lost two games the entire play. Oh, I'm just excited. It's cool seeing such. I mean, I respect when you see any team that's dominant and looks like that, but man, it's kind of nice when it's your team. You know, I'm no Patriots fan or anything like that. I'm not used to lots of winning. So, you know, you know, we got that starting tonight. I'm very excited. Wednesday night, game one, bolts at ads. Oh, it's going to be good. And the other finals is going on, the NBA finals. Game six tomorrow, Thursday night in Boston. Man, Boston blew, blew that game four. <laughs> they had a chance to go up 3-1. Steph Curry played one of his worst games. He was just not good off it, and, and you lost. You can't let Steph Curry, Chef Curry, have that bad of a game and then, and then not win. You can't do that. You got to take advantage. When well, Steph Curry has a shit game. And Boston, you did not do that. And now that I've been rooting for you most of the playoffs. I'm worried about you, Boston. I didn't think you could be beat in this series. But I'm worried about you now. You couldn't get it done when Steph Curry had his worst fucking game. Oh, oh, my goodness, they're in trouble. Hopefully they bounce back. If not, well, we watch the Warriors win another championship. <laughs> but I'm also excited. Um, at the end of the week, my son Draven will be turning eight. I'm super excited for that. We just had last month, our youngest turned five. And uh, I meant to talk about it on one of the more recent pods, but because there was some funny stuff that had, it was just funny the way he reacted because he had been doing this countdown thing where just about every day he's asking how many days till his birthday. I've never seen a kid so excited for his birthday, but this kid in general loves celebrations. He, I mean, he Thanksgiving, he used to, like, he got super excited for Easter. He got super excited for fucking Mother's Day. And now he's all jazzed up for his brother's birthday and then Father's Day. Like he's he just he likes celebrations and you know special occasions. <laughs> he's a fan, you know. And uh he just lost his shit on his birthday. He opened a present he knew he was getting and just ah, I'm so this is so awesome. I love it so much. Like I truthfully never seen a kid so damn excited for a birthday but that was a blast and now his brother will be turning in and uh you know he's super into minecraft space and dinosaurs um are probably his top three things but he loves the jurassic park jurassic world movies and um I was thinking of potentially, because he's getting a lot of like decorations, you mean dinosaur, he's getting dinosaur toys and, and Jurassic Park Lego. Sorry, I mean, he's asleep, so he shouldn't hear what I'm saying, but you never know. You just never know, gotta be careful. So Jurassic World Legos, yes, Jurassic World Lego. And Jurassic World toys, I got them. Quizzical, yeah. The flying one, you see in, in the, in the, I don't know why I'm still whispering. You see in the, in the movie trailer and they're in the plane and it gets attacked by the bird dinosaur. That's the quasicodal. I think I'm saying that right. It's pretty close. I should, you know what? On break, I'm going to look up for sure how you say that. And uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> but I, I, you know, we're fans of the Jurassic movies that they hold a special place in my heart. My dad, may he rest in power. Um, he used to, when I was younger, he would occasionally like let me sneak out of my room after my mom went to sleep to watch TV with him. And uh, that's how I watched a lot of movies. I mean, a fucking alien movies, predator movies, the, the lethal weapon. I remember we watched that die hard. I mean, there was lots of stuff I watched with him and uh, I've been wanting to see Jurassic Park. And so he got me out of bed one night and said, uh, let's go. We're going to go somewhere. And he took me to a late night showing of Jurassic Park. And it was fucking awesome. I had a blast. And uh, my dad would often do stuff like that. Uh, we had a very cool relationship, a very special bond. And um, 
yeah, he took me to see Tombstone late night like that. Like it, it was just great. But so with, with him having taken me to the very first one, the original Jurassic Park at a late night showing, I am going to try and take Mr. Draven to a late night showing of Jurassic World Dominion. The last one, or what we think will be the last one. But uh, we'll kind of depend because, you know, I still am a little worried about COVID. I know, I know most fucking people aren't. Most people don't have high risk people in their family. My wife, oh, sometimes I worry about her. Just the way she breathes, man. She don't need that shit. She don't need to find out if she can make it. No. And then Dra- Draven, yeah, we, we do not need people in our house getting that shit. Uh, no. Vaccinated or not. With the high risk stuff, it could still do some damage. And plus, on top of that, I don't think people are paying enough attention to like the the long COVID shit. I mean, I didn't, I you know, I would try and read up on it and try and figure out what it was about. I got a good idea now because they're talking about how symptoms can last way past when that shit has left you. And I've seen that with my brother's kids. He was just telling me the other day how they're still fucking sick and they're just coughing and this and that and they're still showing symptoms they're still feeling crappy and it's been a month and a half since any of them have had it you know it's just we still don't know i know about long covid and there's a thing out there brain covid covid brain something like that. there's just we're still learning stuff about this virus And so, you know, it's just, I mean, I know it's, it's like, sounds horrible that I'm so panicky about it (laughs) while everybody's back to normal, but that's part of the problem. I don't think enough people are thinking about it. Um, Everybody's just kind of acting like it's over. I don't think it is. And, And the long COVID shit is a little worrisome if you ask me. But in each way, we won't talk just continuously about COVID. No, that's not what we're here for. I've done that before, though. But we got, we got some good stuff for you. We got a good pod for you today, Madcaps. We're going to talk a little outer space. I got some movie chatter, watched some movies in the past few days. And most definitely, we'll get a discussion in about uh, what's been transpiring at these January 6th hearings. Yeah. But first, but first, let's go ahead and get into that movie chatter because uh, I finally got a chance to watch some flicks. And you know what? I must say, I shouldn't have taken so long to watch either of these. But we get into that after a quick break. Okay, Madcaps, we're back. Let's get into it. Movie chatter. Yeah, I'm excited to talk some movies and entertainment type stuff. Um, not big on movies. I, I think that's, and my dad is part of it. It's just that that was kind of our thing. We, we enjoyed watching TV together and we enjoyed talking books. That was a good couple of our, our big things. Um, and so I, I just love the film. I really do. And, uh, I just have that that fondness for that the Jurassic franchise, um, and you know, aside from the dad thing, I mean, uh, you know, seeing it with my dad late night, I saw it an additional five times in the theater. I I had so many Jurassic Park toys, and um, and the book I read the book I had the audio book I listened to that damn audio book so many times because well, there's quite a few differences actually between the book and the movie the original Jurassic Park I, I love Lost World I feel like the book's really good again a bit different from the movie but I feel like that movie is, is underrated the Lost World um, I even really like Jurassic Park 3 even though hey, I get why some people down but I don't care 
I don't care. I'm not as picky as a lot of people. I enjoyed Jurassic Park 3. Really, my least favorite Jurassic movie is probably the last one, uh, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. I don't know. As you can tell, obviously, there's some parallel when you look at Jurassic Park and Jurassic World, and then you can kind of compare Lost World and Fallen Kingdom in some ways. There's some parallels there. But I just, uh, I don't know. It's not that I disliked it, but I didn't think it was amazing. And uh, I just kind of felt like it was the worst of them yet. But Dominion looks pretty cool. You got the, the, the people from the original Jurassic Park movie making an appearance in Malcolm, Dr. Alan Grant, Dr. Ellis Sattler. Yes. So I'm excited for it. I'm excited for it. Excited to see the conclusion. and Hopefully I get a chance to take Mr. Draven to a late night showing. That would be awesome. But I have actually watched some other movies recently, some recent movies that I needed to watch. To begin, The Batman. The wife and I watched that yesterday. Well, the kids watch actually watched that and watched most of it uh, with us. And I got to say, I figured I would like it, but I fucking loved it. I know some people are kind of, and yes, it was very long. But I mean, as far as Batman movies go, I mean, I just, I am a huge Batman fan. Okay. I've got comic books. I've got just, it, I've got this huge display. Well, I, I used to. Now it's mostly in totes because we downsized for temporary. Anyway, I've got a huge collection of all sorts of, you know, Star Wars stuff and blah, blah, blah. Also, Batman. I love Batman. One of my favorite comic book characters ever. I love the whole kind of like Iron Man where, yeah, I don't have superpowers, but I'm rich. So I just make crazy cool shit. Kind of like that idea that you could be a superhero without those superhero abilities, powers, you know. So I love Batman. And, and part of that is, is I love villains. I've talked about this on podcasts previously. The villain, the villains in Star Wars, tremendous, especially if you get into reading Star Wars books. Um, it, you know, just I'm always about villains in X-Men and just a, really a lot of superhero movies have pretty cool villains. But when it comes to Batman, they have the best villains, if you ask me. From Joker, Riddler, Penguin, all, you know, the popular ones to some of the less popular ones, you know, Calendar Man, Victor Zaz, Killer Croc, the Mad Hatter. Mm -hmm. There's a Mad Hatter villain. Batman is just amazing to me. So I'm always intrigued by anything Batman. And um, when it comes to the older movies, Obviously, I love the Tim Burton ones, and I like the other ones. It just, it, it got kind of ridiculous. It's like they went a little overboard with the comic stuff um, when they made, you know, the sports. And, and you know, I, I know my guys on the Levitard show talk about it all the time, but just the amount of cliches that Schwarzenegger uses when he plays Mr. Freeze, it's just, it's ridiculous. Like, I'm not even sure. I, I just, I didn't get all of that, anyway. I mean, some of the decisions I think in those in those next two Batman movies were uh, interesting to say the least. So then you got the Dark Knight trilogy, which I fucking loved. Batman Begins was awesome, and then of course everybody loves Dark Knight. Heath Ledger, may he rest in power, amazing as the Joker. Um, and then I even loved the third one a bit more. Then Dark, Dark Knight Rises, I loved. I loved Bane. There was something about, like, you know, he's got his face covered. So he's acting with his voice and his eyes. And it was phenomenal. I just loved it. Um, quite enjoyed the Dark Knight trilogy. And this, yet again, it is, to me, a bit of a different take. Like, if you ever watch the show Gotham, because again, I love Batman and Gotham was a fantastic show and really focused on villains. I mean, it was all about Bruce Wayne as a young, youngin trying to come up, uh, you know, with just Alfred, no parents, things like that. And you meet a lot of 
these villains and their beginnings, you know. And it's a very cool show. But the vibe that, that Gotham had and the vibe that the Dark Knight trilogy had, if you kind of took the vibes from those two vehicles and put them together, I kind of feel like that's what the Batman was, the vibe for that was. And I really enjoyed it. I really did. I thought the Penguin was great. I thought the Riddler with the mask and, and just the way he, I, I loved it. I loved, and, and really I'm not super into uh dude who played with his name, Robert Pattinson. Pattinson. <laughs> I, I'm not even that familiar with his name. I just know him as the Twilight dude. And I, I guess I, I got to get him right. He did play Cedric Diggory in, uh, in uh, Harry Potter. So I, 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 gotta, I guess I got to give him some props there. But, you know, not super into this dude. I could, you know, give him or take him. I thought he was excellent as Batman. So I just overall really enjoyed it. And then I watched The Secrets of Dumbledore. And let me tell you, I love the shit out of that. <laughs> And that's why I was walking around with my wand at the beginning. My wand. I've got a lot of wands, actually, because we go to the Renaissance Festival every year here in Colorado. And uh, there's a wand shop there. <clears throat> and because of my love of Harry Potter, which I will get into in a second, I collect wands. I got a Voldemort wand, Dumbledore, Snape, Sirius Black. And then I just got a few, uh, like, randos. I need to start collecting more. But... I do have this one right here, which I consider mine. I like the shape. There's, there's a little point at the bottom, which I like. The finger holds are real nice. It's orange if you see it in the light. Big fan of my, my wand, yeah. But I will have to keep collecting them. But that's why I had the, the wand, so. But I love the Potter movies, you know, it, it really, it's just been fun, as I mentioned last pod, getting back into the world of magic. Um, because it does hold a special place in my heart, too. Like, this was something I rejected over and over when my brother suggested. And once or twice, I picked up and read a couple chapters of the first book and was like, this is for fucking kids. And um, it was not until I sobered up. And, you know, I was really in some need of something to do, something to read. And... My brother, once again, nudged me towards the Harry Potter books. And, bro, just get through the first two. It starts to get more adult and darker starting in the third. So this time, I did that. And I actually didn't mind the first two books when I got through them. But he was right. I hit that third book, and from that third book on, Became a Potter fan. Couldn't help it. Prisoner of Azkaban. Goblet of Fire. All the way to the Deathly Hollows. And the Deathly Hollows, one of my favorite books ever. That book is crazy. So I'm a huge fan of Potter because uh, I love the idea that there's a secret wizarding world, you know. And little boy and girl, witches and wizards go to a school that's for witches and wizards. I just think it's brilliant. And, uh, you know, it was just something I feel like it, it was there for me early on in my sobriety. And it helped me get through. So when you get these emotional attachments to things, you know, you get more hyped. Like, hey, Fantastic Beasts, yeah, bring me more Harry Potter because I love the world of magic. That was you know, helped me get through a tough time and I've just loved it since and bring on more magic. And I'm not going to spoil anything. But that movie was amazing and it looks like we're going to get another one. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I just, uh, I dig me the wizarding world, I really do. But with that said, I decided I was going to go ahead and give you my top five Wizarding World movie. So we're including all, all the Potters and the Fantastic Beasts. And I'm actually, I'm going to go Secrets of Dumbledore at number five. Probably a little recency bias. But I really fucking enjoyed it. Like, I, I'd, I'd rather watch that again than either of the first two Harry Potters. 
all good again it's just me for me I, that's kind of like a the, the first two potter books are kind of like a like an intro like a like it's just leading you up to when the story gets good and so prisoner of azkaban is really where you, you know it does get more dark and adult but for me that's really where it kicks off and so yeah i did I'd rather go with secrets of dumbledore but after that mm. my number four would be harry potter for the goblet of fire i love goblet of fire that's fantastic there's some things they could have done you know they missed on the book but you, you know how that goes number three would be harry potter five no that can't be right okay switch that number four i must have wrote it wrong on my list because there's no way i like uh, order of the phoenix more than i like goblet of fire why is order of the phoenix even up there. Why is that even up there? You know what? Fuck this list. <laughs> I think I messed it up because the Order of the Phoenix is up there. And I don't know. Would that be in my top five? Well, here. Well, let's put it this way. All right. Number five, Fantastic Beast Three. Number four, Goblet of Fire. <laughs> number three, Harry Potter Three. Prisoner of Azkaban. Number two, we're going to do it like this since we're doing like movies instead of books. I'll go Deathly Hollows one and then number one, Deathly Hollows two. We'll do it like that. We'll do it like that. I fucked up the line. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? I'd rather watch like Harry Potter one, two, and six more than like Fantastic Beasts two. But I'd rather watch Fantastic Beasts one and three, Secrets of Dumbledore. I'd rather watch both of those than Harry Potter's one, two, or six. I think, yeah. Did you see Squid Games is coming back for season two? Oh, that's nice. That's nice. It's going to be exciting. I shouldn't be thinking about that because I did. Now I got a couple movies in. I still got to finish his Dark Materials. I, that's been a long time coming, and of course. The Obi-Wan show that's out. I've heard some things. I'm behind. There's just so much to watch. I know I say it all the time, but when I saw there was a Loki season two coming and we still got the Lord of the Rings and the Game of Thrones series coming. I mean, they, they really need to slow the fuck down. Chill out. Chill out. Jesus. Speaking of chilling out, let's talk a little mushrooms. Hmm? 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 Here in about, uh, I don't know, 30 seconds. Okay, Mad Caps, we are back. Let's let's get a little magicated, shall we? Hmm, hmm, I say so. I wanted to talk a little bit about shrooms. Came across this article, CNN, and um, you know they're just continually finding out about the benefits that um, mushrooms, well, psilocybin, I think, in particular, can provide. In this article, mycologist Paul Stamets. It's touting the benefits of mushrooms for brain health. He says, quote, let's be adults about this. These are no longer shrooms. These are no longer party drugs for young people. Psilocybin mushrooms are non-addictive, life-changing substances. Now, small clinical trials, this is further, uh, more of the article. Small clinical trials have shown that one or two doses of psilocybin given in a therapeutic setting can make dramatic and long-lasting changes in people suffering from treatment-resistant major depressive disorder, which typically does not respond to traditional antidepressants. Based on this research, the use... use <laughs> Based on this research, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration has described psilocybin as a breakthrough medicine, which is phenomenal, Stamets said. 
no, psilocybin, which the intestines convert into psilocin. I think I said that right. A chemical with psychoactive properties. It's also shown promise in combating cluster headaches, anxiety, anorexia, obsessive compulsive disorder, and various forms of substance abuse. The data are strong from depression to PTSD to cluster headaches, which is one of the most painful conditions I'm aware of, said neurologist Richard Isaacson, director of the Alzheimer's Prevention Clinic and the Center for Brain Health at Florida Atlantic University. He says, I'm excited about the future of psychedelics because of the relatively good safety profile and because these agents can now be studied in rigorous double-blinded clinical trials. Then Isaacson said, sorry, this is all uh, neurologist Richard Isaacson speaking. Then we can move from anecdotal reports of I tripped on this and felt better to try this and you will be statistically significantly better. There's a lot of good stuff in this article. I'm going to link it, of course. Um, but it, it just goes to show like, you know, and some of this stuff, weed, mushrooms, that has just been trashed for so long. And, you know, it's amazing. It's just amazing to me. We're at a point where finally people are seeing the benefits of this stuff. And even, I, but, hey, it's not like I knew how beneficial magic mushrooms could be. I had no idea. So, you know, it wasn't, it was a handful of years ago we found out about the whole microdosing thing. So we started, you know, we started doing that, tried that out. And I wish I was still doing it, to be honest, because I do think it's beneficial. And then you see all these different studies and trials and things, all this stuff coming out. It's building momentum. And that's great. I think, especially when you talk about the brain, as I've said before, Marshawn Lynch beast mode. Hey, he said it best. Take care of your mentals, right? got to take care of those mentals so yeah brain health mushrooms okay i'm on board and i don't have to trip i don't think i'm too old to do the trip i remember the very first time i tripped um i was with my old guitar player and my brother gave my brother a little bit then he ended up going home we were at this park and and uh then I went with my guitar player. We went to his friend's house and his buddy took a bunch of pills and was drinking. And then he ate some mushrooms and he got sick as shit. And all I remember from his house was just sitting there and they had God smack, just that first God smack album with, with, you know, stay away from me. Hell, never misunderstand me. Keep away from me. Yeah. Yeah, that song, that album, just blasting in my fucking face. And then my old guitar player looks at me, he's like, I don't feel good, we gotta go. So he takes me home, drops me off. I'm like, great, everybody else is sick. Now I'm by myself, he drops me off at home. I'm like, what the fuck am I gonna do? Like, okay, I'm sitting here tripping. So I go inside and because I got to go to the bathroom. So I go inside, take a piss. And I, I noticed when I went in, my dad was kind of looking at me. So after I piss, I look in the mirror. And I feel like I could not see any blue, the, any of the blue in my eyes because my pupils were. Burnt. And I was like, oh, no, <laughs> my dad's going to know exactly what's going on. So I walk out the bathroom as quickly as possible and head for the door. And he's like, you're right there. And I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. I'm just going down to the baseball diamond. I'll see you later. And I, I went down to the baseball diamonds and was so happy to be away from the prying eyes of my father. Even though, as I said, I mean, we had a great relationship, but uh, I did not need any of that shit at that point so take a walk down to the baseball diamonds and i just sit in center field and i'm playing with the grass and i realize oh shit the grass is red not green and it's not like it was to me in my eyes it was like red red it was like it had a red tint to it it's so hard to explain it was beautiful 
and it was starting to get dark. I got up. I was like, well, I think I'm going to do a little more walking. So I start walking. And then all of a sudden, bats start flying over my head. Now, at this point, I'm thinking, this is crazy. I was just having a great time petting red grass. And now I'm running from bats. I can't believe I'm imagining bats. Is this because I like Batman? But it bats. But it wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't me imagining, tripping, seeing the bats. No, there's really bats there. Rather, there's a nice wooded area right there. We get bats in that area. <laughs> so the, the bats should not have been a surprise. But I took off and ran. I ran from those bats. And I got to the street. And I just started walking. I walked for probably two hours. Just looking at stuff. I just remember everything. felt. I felt like I was in Roger Rabbit. Like the street sign looked cartoony and, and the fire hydrant. And it just, it was great. Went back home, ate, passed out. It was a good trip. Also had some bad trips. Like, for example, I don't recommend eating a bunch of mushrooms, smoking weed, having a little bit to drink, and then going and getting at the front of a Slipknot show. Because not only is it, you have to fight your way through the crowd and then the pit and all that to get to the front. But then you're face to face with all these crazy fuckers in masks and you're tripping and oh my God. <sighs> yeah. So be careful of that. Also got to get into some space craziness. I read a couple of different articles um, that caught my eye because both are things I've spoken about before. In the past, one, this wandering black hole. It was something that was observed earlier this year, um, but it's pretty much confirmed now because another team has observed it as well. And they're not entirely sure if the black hole or a neutron star, um, but it, it's the idea of it is crazy. I mean, first of all, you know, a black hole that just eats shit up, right? It's just wandering around our galaxy. That seems unfortunate. <laughs> How far away is it from us? I'm just curious. But the very cool thing about this is, is that they actually, the way they're able to locate these things, because black holes are very dense, they're black. You know, you only see them you can really only notice them like if they're near a star um, or something like that, you know. And same with a neutron star. If it's a neutron star, it's very dense. You know, it's not a bright object like a star because it's a neutron star's collapsed star. So... They were able to use this new, I guess, procedure technology, um, but they use this, what they call gravitational microlensing to find it. And they may be able to use this process. Well, I guess that was the right word, process, <laughs> to locate other dark objects, um, you know, other black holes, other neutron stars, whatever. And, um, it's basically, it, you got to pay attention to, because these objects have such tremendous gravity, it will affect things that it's near, right? And that's kind of what you're looking for. And I think that that's, seems like another great tool in keeping an eye on all the scary shit in the universe, <laughs> like we talked about last week. So, yeah. But also, I saw an article um, pertaining to what's called a Dyson sphere. Now, I remember back eh, a handful of years ago, maybe it was more recently than that, but I saw one of the, um, it was one of the shows on Science Channel. I watch a lot of Science Channel. So uh, probably one of those like, NASA's unexplained files or something, but 
where there was a star that was the 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 dimming and brightening of it was odd and one of the theories proposed was that some ancient not ancient but some alien civilization had created a dyson sphere around this star and i've seen another article talking about maybe an advanced alien civilization could create one around a black hole. But basically the idea is to build a sphere around the star, around your sun, harvest all its energy, right? And I really read this recent article, it's the one that caught my eye, about Dyson spheres and they basically talked about how you know there's really no way they could do that we could do I mean at least not with our technology a Dyson sphere it would be too unstable around the sun however a Dyson swarm which would be you know different pieces like sitting there like connected but not connected this Dyson swarm um, would be something that we could potentially put together. It basically consists of here. I found the article. <laughs> Sorry, it's a little bit of you know just dragging shit along to like a, a Dyson swarm consists of thousands of relatively small mirrors or solar panels in an array of orbits around the sun like a dense cloud of bees buzzing around the hive. A Dyson swarm largely shrouds the sun from external view, capturing most of the available solar energy. And they go on to say like a robot driven manufacturing process could build up a Dyson swarm in a, in a few decades. And by taking, and basically what the article goes on to say is they would take resources from Mercury and Venus to help get this done. Because of the chemicals there, they could use that. It's a good article. I'm going to attach it. But just the idea, like, that something like that is plausible, I just think is very cool. And, you know, if something like that does happen, and like, I won't be around to see it. But just the idea of it. And the fact that, hey, we may need to get to a point because along with this is going like, well, we might be able to be, build essentially stations in space for people to live on and they would be powered by the Dyson Swarm. And so like that's potential for solving, you know, our planet problem. I mean, uh, climate change is scary and scarier because people don't believe in it some people just look fucking ignorant <laughs> but yeah it's 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 um to me a really fascinating idea and the idea that, that you know it is technically plausible even for us makes me go yeah if it's plausible for us definitely plausible for an alien civilization who knows what the fuck kind of stuff that i mean you've seen uaps in the skies things like that who knows what kind of stuff what kind of technology is out there who fucking knows and continuing the space talk i saw this thing william shatner who i very much like but i was um you know, I had read about how he went into space and all this, and there was something recently about how he talked about how he cried when he was in space. Because he was just thinking, just seeing it from that perspective, put things in perspective, and he was troubled by us not taking care of the planet. Uh, you should listen to yourself, Will Shatner. I mean, I've been a fan, but this is just stupid. Like, you going up in that rock, like, people like you, just normal people going up in the space, like, do you know the carbon footprint? That? So while you're sitting here crying, 
about the state the earth's in, you only added to it to get that view, that perspective that you got. So I'm a little bothered by Shatner's shit right there, to be honest. And also, before we end this magication session and get into the closing of the show and some January 6th hearing stuff, I do want to add here, because I have seen recently some stuff talking again about defund the police and things like that. It's back in the news. Some are saying, ah, the failed bid of the Democrats. They, you know, they were going to push the defund the police and it's actually hurt them and blah, blah, blah. Failing argument for that. Well, no doubt. <clears throat> That's why I got issues with the left too. Sometimes they, put, they don't know when to stop pushing shit. That's both sides. That's how you get the extremes. When do you stop? You know, where's the line? Where's the line? Because I've, I've never agreed with defunding the police. In a society, you need some sort of, you know, law protection service. You need some sort of law enforcement, right? But that doesn't mean we can't make the situation better right? Better background checks, more training. I mean, it, it should not, should not be easier for a cop, for a guy or gal, sorry, it should not be easier for someone to get a badge and a gun to become a cop than it is for someone to get a license to cut hair. And I know it's a fact because not only my wife, she went through the process so that she could cut hair. Uh, like a cop, becomes a cop in less time. It's infuriating. And some people will point out, well, you need a degree, college degree before you can come. And okay, but you're not doing shit. You're not doing shit. For that job, the training to be a cop. I'm talking about Training to become a cop, just like training to become a hairstylist. I, I'm sorry, my wife would kick my ass, but I can't remember. <laughs> oh, I don't remember the actual term. She does waxing too. I remember, I used to remember the term for that. Damn it, I can't remember any of them. It's hard. It's hard that stuff, the beauty stuff. I don't, I don't. <laughs> But, so, yes, took her longer, yeah, you get, because again, it's not that we don't need law enforcement at all, we need better law enforcement. I mean, as was the case in Uvalde, with the school shooting, too many law enforcement officers don't do their job as they should. I mean, this is how you get racist cops who kill a George Floyd. This is how you get cops not being on the fucking ball at a school shooting. Didn't take all that much to become one. And, you know, now there's so much infiltration from the extreme right. And, and, and white supremacy and these urges that just getting anywhere on the police front seems unimaginable. And I'll, I'll find that goddamn article and attach that to straight from the FBI. So I don't even want to hear shit from anybody. <laughs> Extreme right. White supremacy has infiltrated law enforcement. It's a fact. <sighs> And that's, that's where it gets scary because you can't just defund the police. That's a, that was always a dumb idea for a solution. <laughs> but there are a lot of things we can do. Like I said, it's just like many things in this country. Seems an uphill battle. <laughs> so let's just take a quick break, come back, and we'll hit the closing and discuss maybe some potentially good news. Yeah, we'll be right back. Ah, 
Ah, yes, madcaps. We approach the close. Let's go ahead and close this shit upright. Let's do it. So, quite a bit has come from those January 6th hearings so far, huh? Mm. Now, first off, we got to start the reaction of the diehard Trumpers because it's truly amazing. But these diehard Trumpers, they will never turn. Even with facts presented to them, they stick to their guns, literally, and continue to buy the scam. It's quite insane. There's a lot of deflection, uh, you know. No one cares. People care about gas, the gas prices, inflation, the border crisis. Or, or, or of course, it's a conspiracy. That's a televised production. I... What about the Black Lives Matter protests? I mean, not quite the same thing, but okay. You can push that narrative if need be. I actually heard someone, I not heard, saw someone on Twitter put the, it wasn't even that violent. Did, I'm sorry, did you not see the cop being beaten with a hockey stick? That dude just swinging that fucking hockey stick down on somebody. Like, get out of here with it. Wasn't the way I look at it is, yeah, we done had all those Black Lives Matter protests. And sure, there were some bad situations in there. Not all by BLM activists, I would say, by the way. Most of that shit was peaceful. And y'all had one thing, one thing, and that's what happened. <laughs> but it's not just one thing. Fucking assholes are all over the place. We'll get to that. <laughs> so, not the same. Anyway, it is truly amazing. The, the, the election fraud fund. Not a lot of it going to election fraud activities, right? It's, so scamming people out of there. It wasn't that long ago that he was getting people with like <laughs> donations and then it just make it so it was like a monthly thing. Like he's constantly conning people out of their fucking money. It, it's just, it's amazing to me. People are so latched on to the idea that, uh, really the idea of Trump. Yeah, I kind of akin it to, you know, white nationalism. Um, b- because really, <laughs> MAGA, that whole idea, make America great again. It's really make America white again, right? But MAWA, it doesn't really have the same, you know, ring to it. Mawa. Mawa. (laughs) Yeah, Mag is a little bit better. I'll give them that. They did did pick a good one. I said white nationalists, but white supremacists. See, that's really so much of what is behind this Trump movement, if you ask me. If you look at the diehard Trumpers, not all of them, obviously. Because no matter what these fuckhead maggots say, Trump fucked up. He fucked up. Well, a lot of people fucked up. Lauren Boebert fucked up. Some shit came out about her yesterday. Used to work as an escort. Has had a couple abortions. Okay. I'm not knocking any of that. I don't like that you've done that. And are turning around and so anti, you know, as you seem to be. Very judgmental from someone who's kind of been there herself, huh? That's the way I look at it. Just another reason to dislike the bitch. (laughs) But nobody seems to care. It's just like the Trumpers. Nobody seems to care. Nobody, 
we'll give you the money. We'll be loyal, even though you don't give a shit about us. <laughs> it's fucking wild. It's it's wild. I read this tweet. There was this elderly maga. This lady was talking about an elderly maga couple that she knew, and was discussing how. <clears throat> They were all in on Trump and all of this, and they kind of like considered her daughter this lost Democrat and all this and that. And they just put in a bunch of money to Trump's fraud election claims and whatever fund. <laughs> they lost a shit ton of money. And now they're living in their Democrat daughter's house with her and uh, coming to the realization of the mistake they've made and the con that they bought it to. And that's not the first story I've heard or seen about that. But it is just, I just, they, he don't care. He's gonna keep scamming and this and that. And people say, oh, you, you took Biden cares and Biden this. I'm not huge into politicians in general, uh, but I'll take just about anyone over the racist orange turd who can't handle losing. And that's what it's about. Trump lost. He can't get over it. And the can't get over it crowd who wouldn't shut up about that is now they can't get over it so much that, uh, you know, we feel on the verge of civil war because of these crazy fucks. We got, again, domestic terrorists, white supremacist groups running around causing havoc. And you say, Antifa, y'all about Antifa, what about Antifa? It's like these people don't even understand what the fuck Antifa is. Educate yourself. There's a one group, Patriot Front, a bunch of them arrested for packing in a U-Haul and going to basically fuck up a pride event. They had a bunch of instruments, blunt objects, like weapons. They had weapons, and they were going to beat people, and some of them apparently potentially had firearms. If gets shit got too crazy, you know. Then it's, I mean... Fuck these people. These same people who talk about constitution, freedom, things like that, but then want to silence the groups they don't agree with. And yes, the left does it too. Generally, the left makes more sense and is more in the right, at least based on my morals. <laughs> But I don't really, you know, again, I don't like dealing with those labels. I just, stupid. That's how we got here. Dems versus Republicans. The right versus the left. Oh, and by the way, Ethan Schmidt, another one of these types of assholes, he was the one that was, uh, you know, talking about hunting LGBTQ plus people in Target. I mean, bro, you ever in the area, feel free to drop that gun. Come meet me for some fisticuffs, bro. I'd be down. Because see, I think you're nothing but a little bitch without that gun. Even with the gun, really. And, you know, I ain't scared. Let's go. Let's go. Maybe you think lefties and liberals aren't so tough. Drop your gun. Let's go. And just remember what your trachea felt like before it got crushed. <laughs> okay. Uh, the scary part of all this really is how many people still buy this shit and are in so deep nothing can convince them otherwise. They continue to believe a scammer, a liar, because he's their guy. And then they've been waiting for a fascist type president to come along and make the country be like them. 
belong to their drama, all while claiming freedom. Not all, not freedom for all, just, you know, the way they see it. It's interesting. There's a couple of things here. Lyndon B. Johnson once said, if you cannot convince the lowest white man who's better than the best colored man, he won't notice you're picking his pocket. Hell, give him somebody to look down on and he'll empty his pockets for you. Very apropos for the situation. And I also found a quote by Isaac Asimov. I always fuck up. There's a cult of ignorance in the United States and there always has been. The strain of anti-intellectualism has been a constant thread winding its way through our political and cultural life, nurtured by the false notion that democracy means that my ignorance is just as good as your knowledge. And we see a lot of that, right? People ignoring facts happened a lot throughout the pandemic. And yeah, it's scary shit. It's, it, it, it just... I feel like ignorance is part of it with his follow with those followers. And the other part is just, hey, we want it our way. You know, it is what it is. People praying for civil war and shit like that. Like it's crazy. I come across another article. This one. In the Washington Post, and it's talking about a 1955 book on right wing extremists that predicted January 6th. And this book was kind of based on McCarthyism and things that happened after the war, uh, the Cold War, apologies. But this book, The New American Right, argued that McCarthy's conspiratorial anti communism was here to stay. But again, McCarthyism died nearly 70 years later. The forgotten text, as it's put here in the article, has never looked more prescient. The authors wrote that far-right activists wrapped themselves in the American flag actually posed a grave threat to the country's core principles. In the name of protecting U.S. democracy, they warned the radical right would employ the language and methods of authoritarianism. If the new American right seemed obsolete when it was first published, that changed quickly. By the early 60s, it was obviously McCarthy had spawned a movement with real staying power made up of anti-communist organizations. It goes on to talk about it, but it's, there's a lot of this stuff. I've, I've said before, many a times, these groups that talk about patriotism and nationalism, like there's a point where it goes too far. Ask Nazi Germany, okay? There is a point. These people don't seem to get that. Again, another point I brought up when there was, hey, if you don't like, if you don't like it, leave. Dude, use your shit says MAGA. Again, make America great again, which that's all I'm saying. Make us greater than we are now. Same thing, except for, again, they, they're just really saying MAWA. Remember that, MAWA. So, yeah. That's how I feel about that shit in a nutshell. <laughs> free speech. What's going on with true social? Again, all about the freedoms and the constitution when it suits you. True social, the big truth platform ran by Donald Trump. Oh yeah, they're suspending people over there for talking. Just for talking about the January 6th committee and the hearings and all of that. Right, because they don't want propaganda. They don't want that BS propaganda on their website. Funny. They don't see the hypocrisy in that. Twitter didn't want Trump's BS propaganda on that. Hey, like, it just, like, it blows my mind. It blows my mind. The, the hypocrisy. The veil, okay, yeah. I mean, it, it's, there's a lot of shit coming out with this investigation. It's not done. There does seem to be some turmoil amongst the committee right now and they delayed the the hearing that was supposed to happen today so we'll see what happens but i mean there's a lot of stuff it's looking not too good looking not too good making a lot of uh, people look 
bad. And again, some are going to scream bullshit and conspiracy and what about inflation? And uh, yeah, distract. But more information, and it's just going to keep coming out, keep coming out. And it seems to me that Trump and his cronies, they're scared. But I'm not entirely convinced that something's actually going to come from this. Because I, whether the Department of Justice is, doesn't feel they have sufficient evidence, whether they don't want to spark violence amongst his support, who knows? But I would say the Department of Justice should do something. They cannot ignore this. And again, I'm going to go back to the Potter world, the wizarding world, and bring up a line from the awesome movie Secrets of Dumbledore that I watched. Dumbledore sends a message to the German Minister of Magic telling him to do what is right, not what is easy. So, to Attorney General Garland, I would say the same. Do what is right here, not what is easy. Because, yes, there could be some repercussions for charging Donnie, could be some violence, some people may rise up, but the prospect, the idea of just letting this go and doing nothing, far more dangerous, my friends. So again, do what is right, not what is easy. All right, Madcaps, that's all I got for you. That's all I got for you. That's it. That's it. I got shit to you know? Then like a playoff season, you know? Let's go abs. That's right. All right, Madcaps, getting out of here. Till next time.